Oh, dude. From the mainland. <laughs> what a movie. Dune 2 popcorn buckets. <laughs> yeah. What's in yours? Popcorn? Oh. What's in yours? Just the butter? <laughs> like, like like chunky butter. Dude, I thought I obviously thought Same. these were Dune 2 glory holes. <laughs> yeah, I I know you did. <laughs> What do, we, what do you say we start with uh, with Dune 1? Uh, yeah. The quick kind of recap, uh, Andres, of like, you know, the, the setting. The, the story. Uh, the story and how we got to uh, part two here. Okay, so the story of Dune is about the house of Atreides. Well, there's, in, in this universe, there's like multiple planets with life and every planet is helmed by that, one of the great houses. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> a little bit like Game of Thrones world. Yeah, or on Earth it would be like the Clintons, the Bushes, <laughs> the Husseins. Right. You know? Yeah, the, La the Bin Ladens. You yeah, know, have a little exactly. bit of all of that. Mm -hmm. And so in the in the in the original movie, the, how the the book one starts is with uh, Paul Atreides. Uh, he's he's the protagonist. He's the son of Leto Atreides, the Duke of Kalanham. Mm -hmm. Kalanham is a, a planet with water. Big, you know, cool planet. That's where Oscar Isaac and Timothy Chalamet come from. Come from. Yeah, they look like they're from, like Malibu. Right. Yeah, they're, they're in the cool part of the, yeah. of, of the galaxy. Yeah, they're in the California of the galaxy. But they get <laughs> they get this call from the emperor to go to this planet that is just sand and worms and desert and 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 heat. There's that there's that line where it's like, what do they say about this place? You wash your uh, ass with sand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and it is like that. It's like very I mean it's beautiful in terms of like it's it's this impressive to look at, but you yeah. don't want to live there. Oh yeah. It's beautiful. Like people say like, oh like China's beautiful. It's like, <laughs> dude, I'm not going to China. You crazy? So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, and then but <laughs> This this planet is important because they have this spice that allows interstellar travel. We don't know how any of that works, but we know that there is spice. It's so sick. It's like the LSD it's, of this world. Yeah, I I am obsessed with the spice. <laughs> and and it allows the ships to go from a pl uh, you know interstellar planet, which is needed for the economy of this world uh, universe to work. Alternate title: Spice World. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, good movie. Yeah, that that yeah. that sounds like a little more sexy. That that is more yeah. like your you know sp this, spice world. Yeah, if I may, yeah, I'm maybe there's like a gay version of dune and it's called spice world <laughs> um it's like when i saw twister in mexico city they called it tornado maybe they can call it spice yeah world. yeah yeah. you like, see that there's twisters too oh yeah twisters. Is twisters yeah i saw the trailer, the trailer yesterday yeah, Ima yeah imagine if they uh if that was a crossover and they just did uh moa deep zig zig ah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's the that's the that's the dune carlos herrera version mm-hmm Twisters looks good though. I want to see Twisters. We got yeah. twins. <laughs> so anyway, so they 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 go to this planet that is is being steward by this other house, the bad guys called the Harkonnens that are or Harkonnens that are like you know the opposite. Mm -hmm. If the Atreides are honorable and like you know they believe in 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 fairness and they're no blind. revenge. Yeah. These the Harkonnens are all about power, and they're very industrial. They're very, they're dark. They, they have kill that at soul. will. Kill, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but the reality is that the emperor is jealous of how their traders are conducting themselves. They see they he sees them as a threat. Mm -hmm. And there's been ninety five generations right of atreides there's, i believe yeah there's been a bunch i, yeah, I then, don't remember that there's but nine yes. in dune 2 they say there's been 95 right yeah. so and then they've been uh, in this weird balance for for generations and then but anyway in the first movie they set a trap mm -hmm. and then the harkonnens with the help of the emperor kill all the atreides but paul and his mom who's a Ben Jerez, Ben, how do you say Benny it? Benny Jesseret. Oh, yeah. Benny Jesseret. So cool. Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> she's uh, the Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, she she gets, <laughs> she's uh, she's a powerful witch nun type yeah. of person. Pretty and, cool. And and his son, like, gets saved, mm -hmm. and they get taken by the sand people, this, 
natural, you know, inhabitants of this, the, the natives <laughs> yeah, of Arrakis. Yeah, the, the natives, yeah. <clears throat> who we think are people who have no culture, that they are just savages. They call them rats. Oh, yeah, they do. They don't, you know, they live in caves. <clears throat> That's so gnarly. Vernon, when you refer to it as a group of people like yeah. Ats or Vernon, it's like shades of you know who. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. It, it 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 has a little bit of that, and you can you can feel it. Oh yeah, it, yeah. It's so funny. Is Doom Planet just America? Because <laughs> they're like in the South is where the fundamentalists live and stuff. It, I'm like, well, it has a lot of yeah. They, they talk about religion and fundamentalism in a way that is very current, you know. Yes, which. Um, <clears throat> It's just timeless, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is so cool. It and is. you read these books, right? Yeah, I read the books. I, I read the comic books too. Uh, I I think it's a it's a fascinating when? world. It's a it's a Star Wars for for adults. I agree. I was even thinking when I was <coughs> watching it last night how it felt like watching a Star Wars movie. I was like, this is just so good and original. Yeah, it's like well, war building. It's you very... read it in Spain growing up? Yeah, I okay. read it. I read it uh, growing up. I I thought it was fascinating. I saw the movie that that David Lynch did in the eighties. Which at that time I thought it was kind of cool. It has the LSD? It's like a weird. It's a yeah, weird. I never saw it. Movie that he he hates because the studio took it from him. Oh, okay. But they really, what is very interesting is this. This there is this Chilean um, director and writer called Alejandro Jaradowski. Mm -hmm. He made a book about Dune, how to make Dune into a movie. Oh wow! And it's the most influential movie never made. How interesting. He made a book that has, he collected all this information and 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 created like a, basically a storyboard of the whole movie. Mm -hmm. um, he, so he have Orson Welles yeah. playing uh, the Harkonnens uh, because he was fat at the time, you know, yeah. the end of his life kind of thing. He had Salvador Dali playing the emperor. Okay. And, and at that time he was going to be the most paid actor per minute because he was going to only have two or three minutes in the movie. Yeah. And he was going to pay him a lot of money. So the, this was, was like, like a pitch. They were going to make this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It went through okay. all the studios, you know? Yeah. And and I don't remember all the names because like, although I like all these people, like, like for example, the, 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 the guys who did the special effects for this movie. And he had bands, you know, like this, this the music for the Harkonnens or this going to be this German rock band that is like underground. Oh, like, yeah, like the, Cinderella or Scorpions or yeah, something yeah, like it, that. It, it was super cool. <laughs> but and the book was so influential. It, it is our actual book of like, you know, pitch. A pitch yeah. Book, that movies like Alien came mm -hmm. from this. All the designs that they have, the artwork wow. for, 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 you read this. for Dune. Yeah, there is a documentary really good called like Jaredowski's Dune mm -hmm. that I recommend to everyone. The skeleton will really like it because it's I fascinating it. how <clears throat> how something that never was made mm -hmm. inspires so much art and yeah, that's fascinating. Influential in terms of uh, science fiction. That's so cool. But I thought I think because I think the criticism that Daniel uh, or Daniel uh, Villeneuve has is that uh, he doesn't interpret the book that he's very faithful. Mm -hmm. Although you know the book has some differences, obviously, I think the the movies are so breathtaking. Yes, I think they're bu visually so amazing. It's like you're on spice. That's yeah, what yeah. I actually think. Like when you're when they're showing like the landscapes and like slow motion and stuff, I'm like, yeah. I think it's supposed to give you that like trippy feeling. Uh, yeah, that and, like and beautiful it has a lot of oniric uh, moments in the mm -hmm. movie. But I think to me, this is what movies are, like the best of the best movies. Yes. Like it's a great script, but it's mostly about the images being put together. It's not that heavy on dialogue. Be it sounds hard. I mean, it's a three hour movie. Yeah. It doesn't need to be, which yeah, is saying a lot. It's very cinematic. And, yeah. and, and, and the music and Hans Zimmer, right? Like it. The fight scenes are beautiful with like amazing backdrops. Yeah, they remind me of I mean, Star Wars. Right, like the lightsaber battle is very similar. But it's very grounded. It looks like like a it looks like Daniel uh, Villeneuve and, and Christopher Nolan are working at that yes. level of doing science fiction, but like as real as grounded as possible. Arrival was amazing. I thought. Yeah, or Nolan making a horror movie coming out. Oh, like yeah, yeah, he'll yeah. make like a grounded version of that. I've always liked. Like when Nolan does science fiction because it's so rooted in science, like, right? And 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 you feel like the gravity, the reality of, yes. of everything. And I think this movie has all of that, like the 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 sign, 
I don't know. The acting was great. I thought like Zendaya and and Timothée Chalamet like made it work. I really like Shyamalan. <clears throat> I yeah. like I like um, all the actors in it. I think his mom is awesome. I mean, uh, Sarah Ferguson. She's, she's so good. Incredible. Rebe- Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, incredible. Austin yeah. Butler. Woo. Incredible. I it was he was crazy for me. He was like you. Com- you he's coming from Elvis. Yeah, and he did a great job in Elvis. But it's a completely different character, and seeing him, like his voice is different. Yeah, his energy completely different. He sounds like the voice he's like kind of emulating of what's his name, the big guy, the, the fat guy. So, yeah, the the the, the, the Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, exactly. Barrett. He sounds like him. Yeah, he's 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 in that world. Also, it's amazing. That oh, scene. Did yeah. you? Uh, Andres, did you notice that Stellan Skarsgård did a little uh, apocalypse, apocalypse Now move in the in the first Dune? In the yeah, with, with that with the hand over the head and the eyes. Yes, yes. I it, love I love Stellan Skarsgård. I love what he brings. What an it's, interesting family too. Like yeah. all, full of like great actors. It's crazy. It's but a he's, weird he's, family. He's always great in in it. It's very. But the amount of actors this movie has doing roles that are a minute long, it's insane. Because they has you have you know. And I said Ann Taylor. Anya Taylor Joy. Oh yeah, so, I always like, get her mixed like, up with uh, the trans person from Euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that I go, is that the the mm-hmm. the girl from Euphoria? And I'm like, no, it's uh, Ann Taylor. What uh, a lost. Taylor yeah. <laughs> Johnson. Joy. Joy. Yeah, Joy. yeah like, like she's and she's coming with Furiosa. I don't know. You saw the trailer too. And uh, oh yeah, Furiosa looks awesome. It yeah, looks, it looks amazing too. But she has like what. A shot in this movie, mm-hmm. one, one shot. shot. Yeah, it is like, hey, you got this actor to play this. Uh, again, I'm gonna butcher his name. The French actress, Leo, Leo, whatever. Sado, Sado, Sado. Okay, who's in like James, the the, the love interest of the last mm-hmm. James Bond. You know, he she he, plays uh, Lady Fenring. <laughs> yeah, has more of a role in the books. Uh, but they, I liked it's, how they just focused on her a little bit. There's so much information in this movie, but I thought, you know, they yeah, got I want the to see meat it again. Of it. Yeah, and it, but, but she has like roles that are like minutes long, like mm-hmm. three, four minutes. And I mean, it, they're important characters in the book, but it's like, hey, all these actors wanted to be a part of this. Well, it doesn't matter of how course. big or, or small the role And Christopher is. Walken. <clears throat> Christopher Walken, uh, Josh Brolin. Yeah, just Brolin. Yeah. Also, I, I can't help but see Christopher Walken when I see him. Yeah. I don't see the Emperor. I see Christopher Walken. Oh, of course. Hi, hello. <laughs> you are the Moadib. <laughs> to me... He's the only one that I wouldn't cast myself. I thought because every other actor transforming to the character, mm-hmm. I have, I mean, he's a legend. Yeah. I, I think he's a good actor, obviously, but he is too much of a persona that is difficult for me to see him. As yeah, well. it was strange for sure, but I accepted it pretty quickly. It, but it, I agree with you. It would have been cool to have someone else. Yeah. Role. And the princess, his, his, his daughter, what's her name? Um, the actress. Florence Pugh. Florence. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody is like huge actors playing these small, small roles, which I thought it was good. But I think the whole movie, obviously, um, and obviously you have Javier Bardem playing. Yeah. I role. love Javier Bardem. He's awesome in yeah. it. He brings a little bit of humor. I don't know. Yeah. So like everybody was laughing. Everyone was laughing at those parts. Yeah. yeah which is nice. I feel cool. like we needed it. A little compared to the last one. Oh, I also yeah. forgot uh, Dave Bautista too. Oh, oh. Bautista. So I love him. Yeah. And he. I mean, He's so funny in Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I know, but it's it's in, because this is kind of the opposite. It's oh, yeah. alien looking weird, but now it's like very serious, grounded, and yeah, like killing people <laughs> like in a gnarly way. Like yeah, yeah, he's great in it. Although in this movie, in the first movie, he was scary. In this movie, he feels very weak. Well, yeah, of course, but he's still like <laughs> acting out violently. I think his yeah. weakness is even like more scary because he can act erratic in yeah. this movie. I, I, I thought the difference to me the, between the first movie and the second movie is that the first movie, which I love, mm-hmm. it's slower. It's setting up the world, right? And yeah, and it's not that plot heavy. Because you, you, he tends to like. Which you know, I liked. It was just like a couple plot points, and they're still hitting. long, but it like you know, introduces the whole world. This movie is mostly action. Yeah, and the plot is insane. It's like they but have it to rush. Still run works. Out of, yeah. Oh no, no. It, but it's I'm so surprised think, that the same, uh, like that Dune and Dune Two are so different, but yet they still work so beautifully. I personally think Dune Two is better. Yeah, it's it's definitely more entertaining and it has a bigger pace. I always love the first parts of movies. I like the world Me too. building. Me too. And the kind of this like a little more in um I was gonna say intellectual, but no, it's this is just more reflexive. The first movie, the second one just goes 
Um, and and I think Timote does a great job going from this kid who doesn't want the burden, you know, mm-hmm. to like becoming the warrior and the kind of like, you know, he's such getting, a good actor. Yeah. Watching him, I just get blown away. I I look for excuses not to like like someone like Timothy Chalamet, and I've given up. Like yeah. years ago, I gave up. He, I liked him in uh, God, Lady Bird. He oh, was yeah, so course. good in that. Yeah. Like I, great movie. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's just super talented, and 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 you believe it? I think Zendaya uh, is amazing. I, I like her friend in it too. She, I thought they were both really good. Yeah, but I think she has moments where like there's no dialogue, right? Oh, I know, you know exactly what everything's happening with the look. But then the the chemistry between them work. Such a good actor. Yeah, so I think I think overall like amazing acting, incredible visuals. I think like the whole world is so beautiful. I I was just. I, I saw it on IMAX, did you? Yeah, I saw it at the Chinese theater. And I, uh, yeah, I saw it at Universal City, which has the, the real IMAX aspect ratio yeah. of the Chinese theater too, which is also a difference from the first movie. The first movie did a little more what Nolan does. Which is The what? big spectacle moments have IMAX and then the more intimate moments. Oh, too. okay. And what was this? All <laughs> 70 full, millimeter? Okay. Full, full IMAX, 70 millimeter. That's right. That's like when you watch like... Oh, for if you watch like Interstellar on your iPad, yeah. like it keeps changing. Like it, yeah, yeah. All ratio. of his movies keep changing aspect ratio. I don't love it, although Me I don't used to. This one is the full thing, which I don't know how they're going to do when they cut it to 35 millimeters. It's just going to get <laughs> cut off, right? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. all that's just going to happen. But I thought, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, is it framed just in the center and then everything else is just whirl or no, no, and it's not. Like, yeah, of course. Like, full face or you have like... Oh, that'd be funny though. So it's like If yeah. it's like green screen, they're like, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be 70. <laughs> no, no, no. It like I, cuts I, off and there's green screen and like a guy drinking a Pepsi or something. Also, the character, the, the, the theater was full. It was like, you know... Three packed, o'clock three for o'clock mine. On Thursday. Yeah, packed. It was great. Chinese theater was hectic. I sat yeah. next to two like cool old black ladies. <laughs> they were funny. Um, not a lot of commotion in my area of the theater. Yeah. I had to look at my phone a bunch of times, vaped the whole time. God, God. Uh, and we had a geez, different, different Carlos experience. Vaped. Do you know who, well, you're always into the cinematographers and you teach me a lot about that. Do you know who it was on Dune 2? Actually, no. Who? Greg, Greg Fra- Fraser. Was he done? Uh, Batman, Zero Dark 30, uh, the new Batman, uh, Zero Dark 30. Okay. So we're in good hands. Yeah. I love Zero I, Dark Thirty, by the way. A very Dune like setting. God Godzilla. The, he did, he's he did the Rogue, guy right now. Rogue One. He did Rogue yeah. One. I thought of Rogue Dune. One while watching this I, because I was sitting in the same area, the Chinese, where I saw Rogue One. Uh-huh. And I went with my ex wife and I remember thinking, I don't like Rogue One. Right. Not anymore. Yeah. I, no. <laughs> Yes, not anymore for sure. I did think of her though in the theater. So I, I like, thought oh, I Star Rogue Wars One was here. the best movie they came out of the new Star Wars. I'm the opposite. I like the cheesy ones. I uh, was like the Rogue One. Oh, God. But with this movie and the cinematography, so Daniel- going rogue and I just want to cut you off yeah. for a second. Yeah, yeah. Going rogue in England means having anal sex. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I love l- learning English. These days <laughs> yeah. is my daughter is gonna be in such good. <laughs> Are you looking at that popcorn bucket again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a rogue one. But uh, this, <laughs> I thought this cinematography was so impressive in this movie. And I, because with all of his movies, in all of his movies, he has used a lot uh, Roger Dickens, who's like probably the most accoladed, you know. Won, won the Oscar for. Uh, um, he won for, uh, for Blade, Blade, Runner. Uh, Blade Runner 2049, who Daniel did. Also a Batista movie from yeah. the beginning at the protein farm. Very cool. Exactly. Yeah. I think he got this job because of the, of that role. Oh, I see. I same see. Same director, all of that. He was great in that part. Yeah, I, I I I love him in that. I like that Ryan Gosling can put his car on autopilot and go to sleep and then I land in that. LA. Yes. I was like, that looks really nice. That, that, that's what the future. Oh yeah. Do not do that with a Tesla, Carlos. <laughs> not not for now. Not for now. <laughs> I, I, I the accidents are real, but yeah, I th- I think like. He his detail uh, for cinematography, meaning that that world creation is always amazing. I didn't actually know who this uh, guy was, but I I totally you know it was such an immersive experience. Mm-hmm. The, the the orange, and you see something like Blade Runner, right? The orange and the blues are always yeah. like there is like such a good Hollywood contrast of yeah. colors. You know, most of the action movies are either 
orange or blue of or course orange, orange and blue yeah and then the uh harkonnen planet the washed out it's white like and almost a black and white uh world like with with oh yeah it's so crazy very contrasty very dark yeah and even the makeup everything is so white yeah it's like intense yeah it's like they they're like, like yeah alien creatures. yeah their world was crazy too <laughs> like the fireworks were like blotted out the fireworks blackness I, it, it, they it was cool like, as hell like yeah it, octopus like, ink exploding absolutely yeah absolutely that's yeah. exactly what i was thinking yeah like ink exploding against or just popping in the water it was i like, thought it was beautiful but this you know, disturbing. disturbing yeah very cool very interesting i thought that was such a cool direction to go yeah in. like in like in, yeah. in, in, in austin butler's character um the psychopath this, which yeah, i thought was a perfect way to the describe big, him bad guy of this movie right like uh, his name is Feda Roa or Ra- something. Uh, Fade Rautha. Okay. I always ruin the the names in English. I don't know anyone's names in okay. movies. I always go, "That's Timothy Chalamet." Okay. And if so, they're like, "Oh, that's a young one, Zandor," I'm like, "No, it's <laughs> Timothy Chalamet." <laughs> right, right. But 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 it, he has such a big intro, right? Yeah. So we, we are cutting. F- I like your R two D two socks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had to say that. It's like. <laughs> But I think like, so there is a flow to this movie and then we suddenly cut to this section of the movie that has nothing to do with the rest, which is just to give this character a huge intro. Yes, I was thinking that too. I was like... Oh. In a two and, and in a there's, two there's, 45 minute movie, you know, that section really doesn't add anything but i liked it nope. for some it reason it doesn't flow i'm saying in terms of narrative but it, it's such an important character i, I think it does though because it, it does add because of the, the violence and benny Gesserit are the one right, that they, are really they're the puppeteers they're holding the strings i like they're that. like hey they're hedging their bets on this chosen one that's going to bridge space and time like it's yeah. not just uh paul it's yeah. also this guy yeah be, we have one of candidates. them we don't really care we're not choosing sides yeah okay they thank you for clearing that up because that does help it but you're right because like in the moment i was like what is this it's, this it's, feels it's a like cut and dry uh n- narrative wise i think it's, it's visually spectacular i think it, they, it gives the intro to this character i think he has a great intro yes and and the problem with him a little bit i think in the movie is that he disappears until the end you know and it was such a cool character but then yeah narrative wise they i think they make sense for the so there's the thing that I, I said at the beginning that it was wrong is that we think that it is the emperor is jealous of these houses in, in of, of House of Traders mm-hmm. in movie one. And that's why he's helping his enemies to to, to take them down. Yeah. And then in this movie, we learn, and this is, I get a, a little bit of a, spell, a spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert right now. Is that the world is actually, the, there's a puppeteers in this world and mm-hmm. this sort of like sorority of nuns who also have witch-like powers, mm-hmm. who are thinking not about the moment, but about the generations, how the world is going to be shaped. Exactly. And they think they have a good understanding how the world should be. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the in, universe. In, yeah. in, in this universe, right. Yeah. And in so every one of these women can decide the, the gender of his kids, you know, mm-hmm. They have a lot, and, and they preserve certain bloodlines. Mm-hmm. Very... These are their powers they learn. That's how they can choose the gender, get right. poison out of their own body, crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, this, and this messiah figure will be a man, right? But mm-hmm. it's all the women that can have these powers, and it's like if it's a, if it's a man, well, he's not going to – he's – going to be either the chosen one or he's going to be nothing he's controllable yeah exactly. yeah that's like that's their whole thing they, is they can control for someone them. that they can control and in their prophecy it looks like it's not yet the time for this messiah mm. but paul's mom has taken into her own hand because of love because of mm-hmm. course this this women think the world is pure logic mm-hmm you're having sex with this person or you're creating this bloodline yeah. as, as, a, as a way of doing things. The, the lo- love is not a, a matter of state. Mm-hmm. So she, Paul's mom, really loves her, not husband because they never marry, but his uh, lover mm-hmm. and partner. Yeah. So he decides to give him a son, betraying the, or- the order 
and creating again the the the, the plot for all the, well, the the Dune well, movies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so Paul learns through the movie that he is this chosen one, Jesus like character who's yeah. like humble, good, kind in nature, mm-hmm. but he has this power to lead, and then people are waiting for him to lead. All he has to do is go down south to the fundamentalist and embrace right. that power. And he's conflicted yeah. throughout the movie on whether he should go down there or not. Because the movie plays two things that are interesting. On one hand, you see through Zendaya's character, right, that she doesn't believe in, in this religion part, right? Mm-hmm. Like, And you see the mom, Paul's mom, kind of like creating this propaganda yeah she doesn't like it she, she's like this is a foreigner in our land yeah it's a foreigner online trying and, and to control the, us the moment you put religion in and be, the moment you be people become followers and fanatics mm-hmm. you it's a way to control them now yeah. you have power over them and she sees that very clearly and jessica who's uh paul's mom keeps saying that the, the, telling the tale right mm-hmm. Something that the she's you know she's getting bad when she starts getting face tattoos. Oh, the moment you see her with the face tattoos, you you. Oh yeah, you, it's like Amanda Bynes. As soon as you saw the heart tattoo, you're like, oh no. okay, oh no, she has lost it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and in in her transformation, right, she drinks this poison. Yes, the, the water of life. Water, of, water life, of life, which is like basically the fluid inside coming, of warm coming from the worm. Or as Zendaya and her friend call it, warm piss. Warm piss. Yeah. It's poison and, and, and she handles it and it allows her to open her mind to what happened before in the past. It's like ketamine. Yeah. And wait, wait, Would you take it, Carlos? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> if, if I was in this world, I would have my own Ben and Jerry's woman. Right. And I would pay her to give me the water of life and watch over me. And I'd also want like a little worm to play with <laughs> one of the small ones yeah you yeah. would like i'm not gonna like do anything dark with it or it's yeah, not like it's a this, this little dangerous yeah i would it's not like my sex slave <laughs> it's just your pet it's like yeah it's snake. just my pet Instead it's like snake you will have the yeah it's like funny to have right and by the way i would drink so much of that pool of water the problem with you is like unless you're the chosen one which <laughs> i don't know yeah you are dead I know, but that's why I would have a Ben and Jerry's girl there to, to help me. I see. I yeah, see. I would have like the high end service. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like someone coming in and giving you like the tubes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I would just yeah, pay for rescue it all. you in time. It's know. called the Chosen One package. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just costs like you know a half a bottle of water. It's easy. I just keep <laughs> taking it from the dead people water. You, you well, <laughs> it's my scam. <laughs> so uh, you like every time <laughs> that those scenes are so. Interesting, beautiful, and gross at the same time. Oh yeah, time, I know. Right? It definitely grossed me out. But yeah, I I lost my train of thought with this uh, <laughs> warm piece. But the idea oh, like, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Jessica and the rest of the Ben and Jerry's <laughs> have been poisoning or not poisoning, but they've been expanding this ideas of a Messiah coming and these ideas of religion, so they have built an army. Isn't that like fanatic. old-fashioned religion though? Like even like in, right, like Mexico, there's like like uh, psychedelics are such a big part of their cross with Catholicism. Right, right. No, like, and, and, and they have a lot of, I thought there's a lot of like Islam yeah. fundamentalism, like imagery. The other movie that this one reminded but me of. Couldn't it be any religion? Are you just saying that because of the sand? I, I say because of the <laughs> of of the sand, of the ethnicity of a lot of the characters. <laughs> You're making it worse. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and and the, the way that they pray is it feels more you Muslim. know like Muslim than like yeah. Christian. But every fundamentalist would be the same. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think in today's world, probably the most you know in the fundamentalist uh, like countries and in the sand, there are yeah. maybe more Muslim. <laughs> but the movie that this reminds me of. With this storyline, which is also a book, which is also based on a real the story, Bible. is no, it's Lawrence of Arabia. Okay, yes, yeah. Lawrence of Arabia, which is about uh, a wine man mm-hmm. savior, exactly yeah. with the tribes, and 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 it's all in the Muslim world, all of that. Anyway, and it has like it's in the sand. It's the, beautiful. The, it's beautiful, slow. Oh, that amazing yeah. movie. And, and Paul, just like uh, Lawrence, is like, hey, I'm. 
like Lawrence basically is like, I'm Arab. I'm one of you. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's this white, you know, white, white with guy, the blue eyes, blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm Arab, right? Yeah. He's has he's wearing their their cloak. Everything. Yeah. Same thing with Paul. It's like I'm Fremen now, but he doesn't look Fremen. Yeah. Right. He's like I have assimilated into your culture. That's who I am. I yeah. have agents to you. <laughs> it's like when a white kid goes to a black high school. It's it's a, and, and, and he gets like dreads or something like that. You're like, oh, he's Fremen now. Right. But the movie yeah. plays both things. So on one hand, it's like, hey. They warn you about how this fanatism happens mm-hmm. and and kind of criticize. Yeah. On the other hand, it gives you that actually he is a chosen one and he is Crazy. blessed and he, yeah. he has this power and therefore justifying that the fanatism happens. Oh, shit. So Are my eyes still brown? <laughs> no, you're good. Too much spice. Too much spice, but yeah. <laughs> the eyes are changing. So something that is not in this movie, but it is in the Doom book. It's like, what is the spice? Do you know what the spice is? Uh, it's like the stuff in the air that they can collect. I mean, I just know what the, it does. I don't know, like. I didn't read the books. I right. thought you were gonna say tahin. Yeah, tahin. It's, it's, tahin. it's like the hem of the desert. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> but it is actually the worms. The worms are the spice. Whoa! The spice they didn't the fucking worm. tell us that. So if you get rid of the worms, then there wouldn't be spice. So is it just like the crustiness that comes off their body? <laughs> or or I, I don't know if I would phrase it like that, but yeah. <laughs> it's just maybe when they die and they... they... Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Or they and that's why the spice. maybe like the water of life is so potent because it's like pure, it's like liquefied spice. It looks like they kill it when, with, with, when water comes, you know? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, what the journey... And the journey, I mean, th- there's five books in the Dune world. Yeah. First... Book one and two are Dune. Uh huh. Six six books now. Six books, six books. But and and they're already. He thought about this as a trilogy, and yeah. I think they have ready the third movie. Yeah. It was ba- based, I think, on the Doom Messiah thing, which is now living with the consequences that we have done. Are books three and four Dune two? There uh, are Dune Dune one. Uh, the first book is um, <laughs> part one and two. Oh, okay. In- included in the first book. Okay. Yeah. So we've only gone through one book so far. Oh, wow. Jesus. And the second book is called Dune. I mean, but it says inside book one, book two. And oh, two, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Now, the, sec- the third installment, I think, is living with the consequences of what he's done. And actually, yes. the movie ends on like, one of those, like the first one, ends on um, abruptly, like mm-hmm. there's more. Yeah. I was ready for it to end, though. <laughs> You, I wanted to go home. It's two forty-five hours. Yeah. I mean, to me, it wasn't long. It didn't feel. No, long. it didn't feel long. But it's... I didn't look at my phone once. Really? In three it was, hours. It was the middle of a work day, Andres. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. why I was looking at my phone. That's work. It is work. It is work. You got to. You be can take it out of your taxes. Is work. You're right. I was getting stuff from Slack though, so uh, I, I responded. Slack. When I look and then I have seventy five messages. Like... Oh my gosh! Look, I look. This is a movie. The pacing is so strong that it's like. Yeah it's it's hard to kind of turn away and do something else because it's so jam-packed with action. So much action. Yeah. It's so, and, and plot-wise, it's so once. heavy, meaning like you go from moment to moment to moment. There's no the breathing room that you had in the first movie. It's no just, bathroom breaks. No. No. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's, it's, it's constant. Something's happening all the time. And and more power to Denis uh, Villeneuve for like taking something that's so complex and there's so much information, yeah. and just moving so fluidly between these these mm. there's this information. Agreed. That's, it's a lot. Like this could this movie could overwhelm you with information. And be like, I didn't like it, but he handled it well. Right, because it did the book like a lot of these books that mix a lot of religions and cultures and mm-hmm. put them in a parallel universe or alternative reality like Game of Thrones. You know, it's very complex. But oh, yeah. unlike Game of Thrones. In this two and a half hours, two hours and 45 minutes, you get the plot is very simple to understand. Mm-hmm. A lot of things are happening, yeah, but you don't get lost yeah, in the story. Th- which is an incredible feat. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I think, yeah, it reminded me a lot of things that he did in different cinematography, but he did in, in, in Blade Runner with the lighting, the light so cool. moves and changes. There's so much high contrast, yeah. and darks and light. Um, I like the last Blade Runner, but this these movies just blow it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I prefer these movies too. Yeah, I, I think like the, I Blade Runner. I think vis- visually is a feast, but I yeah. the story wise, I I love this this type of yeah big epic. Oh, I love Blade Runner, so I wanted the Anadarmus machine. Uh, yeah, you, of you, course. Yes, yeah. yes. I I you don't have to tell me. Yeah, of course. 
when I but, saw that, I was like, holy shit, I need that. That's the future. Like, yeah. you're, you order that online, you know? Yeah. Better than the dolls. <laughs> yes, better than the dolls. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also the music. I always oh, like Hans Zimmer. Hell yeah. yeah. They were playing it when we walked in. It's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to the theater. Because it has that, I mean, I think Hans Zimmer, sometimes I get turned off by him and his drums. Mm -hmm. It's too big. But when he, I mean, I thought this one was great. Yeah. I was even, I was watching Tenet the other day. Yeah. And like the action and like chase sequences. Like, I just like, it's just incredible Hans Zimmer. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's cool and gives a sense of a scale that a movie like this needs. Yes. A million percent. I love like the intro scene. I, I love that. I think it was one of the strongest scenes oh, yeah. in, the, in the whole movie. When I loved they, it. The, that, that small battle scene that mm -hmm. when they float in. And, and oh, it's so or, cool. I, I, I already was like, okay, I'm in. Yeah. The floating up. Yeah. The, that was the, awesome. It looked those, so graceful. I was like, that's sick. Sick. And it yeah. feels like, it feels so real. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I just love everything. Everything filmmaking-wise, production sign, every, every attention to detail. Yeah, I... Costumes, everything. I and like, you know what I liked on the, in the second one, too, is that Javier Bardem <laughs> offered some uh, comedic relief. Yeah. Because you got some laughs in the theaters. In the first one, there's no real funny lines or whatever. You don't necessarily need them, but I, I do enjoy them. I, yeah. I, I, I was thinking we needed them in this in dune 2 just like to take a breath like in dune 1 there's like you're supposed to laugh when he's when timothy chamelay calls josh brolin like old man yeah but it's like you don't really laugh at no, that not really because the first one i mean they're both dark movies yeah there's a lot of more violence and death in this one so having the levity is, is good yeah in the first one i mean they kill his father they they go into exile all of that so yeah dark mm-hmm so I don't think they have, and when they find the the Freeman, they don't have that much interaction, right? The movie kind of ends there. Exactly. Yeah. This you, one, his perspective, his life perspective, the way that he phrases things, because mm -hmm. he's not saying jokes. It's just you, you, you. I mean, who, Shamalay or but Javier Bardem? Oh, okay. Like, hey, either you ride a worm or you die. You yeah. <laughs> so he says it's so matter of fact that I think it's just the contest that makes it. Yeah. It's not He's a, like, oh, the savior. Yes, he is so humble. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so play, funny. all of that was so so funny. Yeah and, yeah, and and it hits every time. You know, if you found everybody laughing, I I thought this, I which found is this cool. Why it was nice to have that laughter in Dune too, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I I I I like it a lot. So. Yeah, what what is the the most impressive scene, or what is the thing that I mean? The thing that calls to me, yeah. spoiler alert, is the Austin Butler fight with um, the eclipses in the background. Like I just thought, like the sun setting, I thought that was so beautiful, and it reminded me of Star Wars, like the lightsaber battle with Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Like it was just incredible, and I like that fight a lot because you really think Timothy Chalamet is lo gonna lose it because I yeah. didn't read the books. So I'm like. Oh fuck! Are they going to do it's, some witchcraft to get him yeah, back from the it, dead or it's something? Close, close. It's a close. Uh, and when battle. he grabs the blade, yeah, it's so gnarly that people in the theater were like gasping because it feels so intense in that moment. Because like <laughs> you're really like not breathing like normally while watching it. Such an intense fight, and then when you see Austin Butler, the blade in him is just fucking incredible. It's so well done because yes, I I, I feel like. It actually tricked me. I was like, build yes. a character that is kind of like has these powers, you know. You Butler, be like no, uh, um, Timothy, like basically oh, yeah. Paul. Paul is like Neo, you know. Mm -hmm. He's the one he's been chosen. He has this power, so you don't really necessarily have to fear for him because you know that he'll be on top. But also, but Butler is so powerful that I'm as powerful, and and then Timothy is so human in a mm -hmm. way, and maybe this is like he needs to sacrifice him because he has this messiah thing like at the end of the day messiah all the messiahs sacrifice themselves exactly so you can you feel like he's he's in danger yeah yeah and you feel for his life in real you don't always think oh of course he has this battle done yeah no you don't think that in this movie and i really appreciated that what was uh impactful scene for you um i really love the opening yeah i i i don't know why that resonates so, so much in terms of how from the very first moment. And the movie starts with, before even the credits, right, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a line. Like. With subtitles that says like, uh, 
right? The, the yeah. spice, the, spice the more spice you have, the power, something. something. Yeah, Th- those who yeah. control the spice control the world, yeah. you know? And then you you start seeing the logos of the of the product, Yeah, legendary, of yeah. So yeah, I think the, the op- really, I, th- I think for me is is the opening, the opening is, a, is an amazing thing. Yeah. Not only the first images of that, we were talking about that, that watery. The womb, yeah. LSD wound. <laughs> yeah, it reminded me of uh, like uh, a space odyssey. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, and it has a little bit of that. Uh huh. Too, right? Which I really liked going into Dune Two. And yeah. I, I actually like the opening of Dune One better. Well, the opening lines that dreams are messages from the deep. Oh yeah, that was I like that. one I too. like that line. There's something really powerful <laughs> behind that because it's very dreamy. The mm-hmm. first one, it's Paul. You focus on Paul's dream. He's dreaming about the future. It's fragments, right? And it, yeah. And this one, uh, you know, the, whoever controls the spice, you know, has the power or whatever. But I think what it, the more powerful line is the person that uh, that can destroy a thing has the real power. Oh, yeah. yeah because he wants to destroy the spice that, that has the power to destroy. Exactly. Yeah. really has the power. He, yeah. he does. And, and the difference between the two lines and the two open is uh, talking about it just philosophically is that the first one is some more, you know, it's not a, a more dreamy movie. I think they're both a little bit psychedelic. This yeah. a lot of that. The first one, this one is, is very, more action. Yeah. And it's fights and battles. The other one is more about thinking about the Yeah, like the, the big action in the first one. Well, a big action like piece is literally like Oscar Isaac poisoning uh, the other guy. Yeah. Or uh, uh, Duncan Idaho, uh, yeah. which is played by... Um... <laughs> Uh, Jason Aquaman, Momoa. Uh, Jason Momoa. Oh, that's yeah. right. Is, Momoa. Is the big, is really that's the biggest action of, and then it's then it's done. He's he's battle. Well, I mean, there's one yeah. big action piece, which is the 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 invasion where yeah. everything gets destroyed. But we don't see that much of that. Exactly. The, in that, Dune Two, you see you you are with them in the battles, in which the battle. I love the battles. Like the I, first couple ones where they're destroying the spice uh, harvesting. I think they're awesome. Things. Yeah, and and it has that little bit of a uh, the Star Wars resistance. A million know, like percent. A, a group of people trying just to destroy this. Yeah. Thing. Paul, yeah. Paul and Chani working together with the with the gun and really yeah. like, loved all, loved all that too. All so of that cool. is, is is really cool. Yeah, and I I like the sunworm like like Kim like don't do anything fancy. Oh like, yeah, they, they, they go and like he he rides this thing and the, you would do it fancy though. Oh yeah, right. I will I will do something. Fancy. Yeah, could, yeah, yeah. And then backwards <laughs> with a collared shirt. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I would do it with a collared. What? Where's where's your Fremen suit? <laughs> But, yeah, like your things that you cling on to it with would yeah. be like have Spanish words on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's an impressive, impressive movie. Yeah, I was, I loved it. I, I don't normally want to go right back to the movies, but I want to go right back to this. I even was texting with uh, Skeleton after, <laughs> and uh, we both put on Dune One when we got home. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it it this movie makes you want more. Skeleton, so it, that was like at eight p.m. Don't you have kids? Yeah, I I, I do, but they were asleep, and I I just threw on another <laughs> two two hour and forty minute movie. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, your the, wife the, left the, in the background. <laughs> just the, give me the, the, the length <laughs> of the film. Like you end up with oh wait, there's more. And because one of the interesting things, uh, plot and and, and theme wise, is that he knows that if he fulfills his destiny. There's going to be a lot of death. Exactly. Yeah. So he doesn't want to do it. But he knows that it's his only choice eventually. Is that like Jesus not knowing like if I, he should do everything because he knows like, oh, like the Jesuits are going to kill people in the crusade. Well, and I, like that. I, th- I think I don't think so. I don't think the Bible has the, that sort of like premonition. Oh, I know. I'm just making that up. Like, oh, I'm just you're like, saying oh, like do you that, think? Yeah, because that, that is kind of similar. Isn't this well, what any, the, any religion and any fanatism that and and inclined to a religion has death creates coming, the, yes. the the narrative that it's either with me or or without me, you know, yeah. or against me. Isn't this part of Joseph Campbell's like hero's journey, right? The resist the resistance to the call or whatever. A million percent, yeah. right? Where you have where the hero has to be like, no, I that's not for me. I can't. Man versus do that. himself. Yes, but the difference yeah. in in for example in Star Wars, which is the the journey, like the hero's journey, perfectly mm-hmm. described by by Campbell in in that screenwriter in way like he is just a normal boy who is being called into this thing that is way bigger than him and he doesn't know if he's going to be f- fulfilling that right and yeah this Paul is different Paul is already 
trained. He's already mm-hmm. powerful. He's so much better than Luke Skywalker. And but he <laughs> knows that Ugh. that his hero won't be heroic. It's not yes, I like that with distraction. It's like, it's, and that's why he would. He, there's a lot of dread in the movie. God, this just makes me hate Luke. <laughs> no, it's, I hate. I don't like Luke. I think Luke is, it comes from a different era, right? Like in like yeah. a little more optimistic times. Yeah, but I, I, I think give him a ha- break. Give Luke a break. He didn't have parents, man. Right, he's an idiot. But with with Paul, <laughs> what happens is that at the end, right? Mm-hmm. So he kills. Well, he gets into into the emperor's chamber, right? Mm-hmm. He trick everybody. He, yeah. He tr- and then he says, "Oh, hey, kill everybody, right? Kill all the army." Mm-hmm. The Sardaukar. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the emperor's army were like technically the best. Yeah. Fighters in the galaxy, and then he has all the other houses around him, mm-hmm. and he's saying, "Hey, if you guys attack, I can destroy this whole thing." Yeah. So they decide not to attack, but they also don't consider him the emperor. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he says, okay, war begins. That's when the movie ends, right? Like, it's a big spoiler, but it's... Which is awesome. Not, you know, like, the next movie needs to be, like, which is him against everybody. It's going to be crazy. And then it's going to... So there's a lot of death that is going to come from Zendaya being mad, yeah. Also, that's another thing that I was going to ask you, like, because probably you weren't seeing that coming, right? That Mm -mm. He, that he knows chooses. that he's going to lose her. And we think is he's going to lose her in a different way, right? Mm-hmm. Because he said, like, hey, if I go south, if I become who I need to be. Then you die. You are going to, you know, we're not going to be together. Mm-hmm. And she said, like, you're never going to lose me. Mm-hmm. But he is the one that does a political thing in this world. Right? I was surprised by that. Right. It's, a, he... it's a big, bald move, right? Yeah. I'm, like, amazed, I'm amazed how political this movie is. Super, super. It's like playing chess. Yeah, political I didn't like chess. that part. It reminded me of Game of Thrones. I was like, damn. And, and, and I think all this, all of these books that I think they're amazing, but mm-hmm. they all play with the same in the same rules. They all take a lot of European history, like bloodlines, houses, stuff. and bloodlines, and all that. They all take a lot of religion. Oh, I from guess mythology. that is European. See, to me, as an American. I don't even think about stuff like that. To me, like well, houses but, are very like, oh, that's from like Camelot or something. Right, but that's European. European, I know, but, but like the, the, castles, things, the like the, the stories, the, yeah. I just forget about it. Even even mm, where are the Rosendes? Huh, <laughs> yeah, the Rosende Castle in Galicia. <laughs> 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 but it is like that. The U.S., although obviously a lot of your room people, just has posters of like, Euro- movies. Exactly, in it. Europeans like, came here. They don't have that sort of like. Every city is a castle and 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 it's a yeah. family against another family, a little kingdom against another. Kingdom. Yeah, that's crazy. That would never be the case here, right? Because it was way later. It, yeah, but they it's a, it's a fun world to. I think love about, it, and I think that's why like Game of Thrones has that. It's so cool. Dune has that. Yeah, they, they I would always try and assassinate planet. these people. You would always try to assassinate. Yeah, like you'll be a spy. Well, I just think, uh, well, there's no way I would be in one of these families. So I think I would just, for fun, with me and my friends, I think we would just kill people. You'd be Dr. Yue. Who's yeah. that? And that's the, from the, the first, first one. Movie. He's the traitor. He's the one that kills uh, Duke, of, Duke. Oh, yeah. Okay. Duke. That wouldn't be me. I would be. He has said, he basically kills. Duke. I would just be a buddy he, of, of Paul's. That that person did a lot of training. You know, he yeah. was a doctor. Carlos ain't gonna put that work. That's like twenty years of like <laughs> yeah. mystical thing. Okay, Carlos's you know. dad though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm the son of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I see Paul on the planet. I'm like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> give me some spies, yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm running low. Just, um, just a little taste. <laughs> there's fentanyl on this one. What the? <laughs> but also an- another thing that is really cool in the book. Oh, wor- wait, sorry. Worm piss is the fentanyl of of spice. It so is. It kills all men. It kills. It kills all men. <laughs> yeah. Got to be careful. But she, when she takes that water of life, right, mm-hmm. and then suddenly it's like, hey, that was crazy. Not only she's gonna have all this pain and all these memories, now she's pregnant, mm-hmm. and. The fetus is gonna have all of that too. Insane. And then suddenly, which is I think the creepiest part for me of the movie is that she's talking to her daughter that is still in the womb. That part is insane. And if my mom did that, I'd be like, enough. <laughs> right. I'd be like enough. And but also that the fact that she's hearing her and that she has thoughts and opinions and like already you think like, oh, you don't want her to because in the next movie, in the next part, yeah. she's gonna be out. So annoying. And she's gonna be kind of powerful and and Imagine if your sister like annoyed you like before she was even born. I'd be like, dude, 
Go away. Chill out. Yeah, I have to see. I'm seeing my sister in a couple of weeks. Already, yes, we're you're... getting mad at each other. <laughs> I'm like, I need to borrow your car. She's like, for what? You have to charge it. I'm like, I don't know how to charge it. I'll Manny do that part. <laughs> and it's a whole thing. That's, that's the doing of uh, Austin. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, whenever she pulls up into the garage, like smoke comes out. She's like, oh, I have to take my kid inside. I'm like, it's fine. Get a gas mask. And she gets mad at that part. That's so funny. Yeah. But yeah, I, I in, in um did you see the the David Lynch tune? Mm-mm. No, I never saw it. It's uh what about you, Skeleton? It looked like you You know what? I I've seen parts of it. I actually haven't seen the whole thing cuz it's 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 long and I just haven't yeah, yeah, I haven't sat down and watched it all, which is which is a shame. I should. I yeah. Should see it. Okay. Well, hey, it, it has a yeah, it has a lot of the of the <laughs> same uh hey. yeah, he took the the water of life. Yeah. <laughs> And that's this it. is what happens when you take the water of life. Oh yeah, yeah, you turn into the Republicans say make a skeleton, a dead <laughs> skeleton. But okay, so what? I mean, what about you, a skeleton? What's the what's your the scene that stood out the most? You know, it's it's. I would say the 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 fighting pit with uh, F- Fade Routha, mm-hmm. just Austin Butler's maniacal laugh yes. when the the treaty's um, gladiator, if you will, like is trying to stab him, oh, and he's yeah. just like laughing. He's got that black substance in his mouth, and he's just like, ha, 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 ha. it's so weird and oh, yeah, creepy. What's in and- their mouth? I don't know. It just that just I, that Didn't imagery the spit is black. Yeah, it's, it looks like their their whole mouth is black. Oh, gross. yeah. That was just a that 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 scene <clears throat> was like I it's it's painted in my brain and yeah. and Austin Butler's acting in it. I, I he's getting it's basically he's getting off to like yeah it's that so creepy that violence he's, he's creepy and there is a lot of I I agree like I, there is something weird and that it stands out about that scene is this a coliseum right it is mm-hmm. some, that some gladiator thing that we saw yeah not only that he's fighting people who've been drugged and like you know oh, like, yeah. that is they they're all injured but it look yeah that's so <laughs> something like the rich kid would get to do for his birthday right 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 yeah. just kill kill people but then you realize that how and there's a little bit of in the book there is more right about mm-hmm. but you get to see a little bit into his life and how he kills people and then they eat it Oh yeah. They eat the people that they kill. And he has so a little gross. bit of like a kind of like a vampire and his mm-hmm. uh you know lady vampires around him. Yeah. He has that group of people that they're rarely in the movie, but it's his you, entourage. His, his entourage yeah. is like these people that eat people. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, kind maybe of crazy. I feel like yeah, he, like out of all those uh all those people on that planet. His crew is like particularly dark. Yeah, he, they're like the goth kids of the goth planet. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they are. I mean, this is a very goth planet. Oh yeah, it, you they know have what? Emo night. It's every night. It's yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I exactly. do have to mention something about that scene that was part of the book. Um, was I don't know if you guys remember the Hawats. Hawats are like these these human calculators. Um, in in Dune, where they can just yeah, they just can foresee or whatever. It's that it's that light skin, heavy set black dude. That's it. That, oh, I love that guy. He's, so yeah. he's a, that, he's like a human calculator, right? Yeah, like he's looking um, at the at this. Uh, the, at he the... survives, and Baron and the Baron actually <laughs> hires him as his Hawat. Um, cool. and this whole this uh, Hawat blames um Jessica. That she was the traitor, whatever. So he's bitter about that. But he's still kind of secretly working for... He's still a traitor, right? He's still oh. loyal. So yeah. he's the one that didn't poison the um, the gladiator. He's the one that orchestrated that in the book. Mm-hmm. Oh, but, that's cool as hell. But I like that th- that that was cut and was streamlined. Yeah, I guess It's that. just the Baron. And let, we don't need this whole storyline. That That's a huge part of that. The, they have a traitor working for him that's and all cool. that. But... I mean, the book is, a, I mean, this movie is gigantic. Well, can like I tell two, you? Two, two, six hours, two, three hours movies. Yeah. I thought I saw that guy at the theater. <laughs> I really did. You I'm not even, guy. I'm not even joking. They cut my scene. I was literally like, <laughs> oh, we're going to get an actor from Dune at our movie. <laughs> and I was waiting for, I was just like getting smart water. And um, right. then when he turned around, it's just another black guy. <laughs> but I really thought it was God, it. Carlos. I was like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been bad if I was there for like um, the Michael Jordan movie. I'm like Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, <laughs> so many. Yeah, um, we're gonna have five Jordans at our. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah. another part of that scene is that um, raid. Um, Fade Fade Routha poisons his blades. Yes, one of his blades is poisoned, 
and they just cut that out completely because i mean that's something that happens at the end i was waiting for that but at the same time it's like it's that's better cool. when it's a streamlined because when it's too much, it, it was already too it much. It would have right? been too yeah. heavy. Yeah. So at the heavy. end, he does uh, stab Paul, right? Yeah. But the, Paul wins the battle. But that blade's supposed to be poison. Poison. And then because he's this person who can beat the poison, you know? So oh, he, it does. Everybody thinks that he killed him. Mm hmm. And then he kind of resurrects because... Oh, which is what I thought was going to so, happen yes, and yes. I was going to get annoyed of. <laughs> so he, he has a little bit of that, but because we saw that with Jessica already and then... Oh, that's I, so cool. Thank you for telling me that. I think the, the changes in the book are good changes for the Really movie. good changes, yep. Okay. It's a really well thought out scream, uh, screenplay, I think. Okay. Yeah, da- the, the adapted screenplay is like is really great. Uh, yeah. I mean, just... He got nominated for an Oscar for uh, for writing last time. Mm-hmm. I think this time he's gonna get also the directing uh, nomination. I, I think this movie is way too impressive. Yes, I agree. And and working at this scale, I mean, he had comments the other day that I don't necessarily <coughs> agree with, but he was saying that all lives matter. He's, he no. <laughs> he, he's tired of movies uh, that that I think movies have been poisoned by TV. There's oh. too much talking these days. There's too much talking. He doesn't think like a Woody Allen movie is a great movie. It's boring to him. They talk too much. Yeah. He thinks movies should be Cool. We need someone images. like this. Then. Did that make you clench your fist, Andres? <laughs> I, I disagree. I love the other but... movies, and, and I disagree, but this we... is my favorite type. My favorite type of movie, the one that I would like to make, the yeah. one that I get drawn to, is the ones where like it is a visual I movie. know you love that. Can you do it without words? I'm the opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like that, that's, but I think we need someone like this. Because he's writing and yeah. medium, and that's what he's saying. Which is true that there's a lot of talking. Yeah, this guy could never write comedy. Well, then, then uh, <laughs> yeah. Tarantino's like, well, what the fuck, dude? Right, yeah. right. Who, by the way, for SOS viewers and listeners, I saw walking up to the Vista the other day. Oh wow! Did you tell him to join us? Oh no, I didn't talk to him. Yeah. I, he saw me, and then I turned around real quick. <laughs> I was in my car, and then I sent y'all a video. I haven't, I haven't been to Vista yet. Have you been in in the new era? In no, the- not in the new era. I think that Dune is playing there though, so I want to wow, go. Makes sense. Yeah, it's want- such a smaller theater for for that totally. movie like this. But I've already but yes. seen it, so I'm like, f it, and I can walk I, there. I because he also he only plays. I mean, I also saw this movie in 70 millimeters and. Mm-hmm. It was a different experience. You know, you see the scratches on the screen, even if it was probably the first time the screen went off. So, yeah, there were scratches on ours, too. And, and I, some like, people were not used to the little flickers. There was a blob, uh, a blot that came, was like the first hour and then the last hour, yeah. like right in the middle. And it's, uh, I thought. But I, I like that. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Cool. I, maybe I'm nostalgic for an era I, that I. I am, too. I, I like seeing that. They don't care because they, they're so used to this pristine looking image. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I, growing up, all movies would have a mark on it. Mark here and there, and yeah. then they just have that it's little cool. like dreamy yeah. aspect. It also, looks like spice. Speaking <laughs> speaking of imperfections, I like that uh, Zendaya has one tooth that's a l- slightly crooked and that's not fixed. Do you notice that in yep. her smile? I I like I don't like when actors have like pristine like Pr- oh yeah uh, teeth. It's and like when eyebrows. NBA players, and it's when just they like first get to the league, they're yeah. Too I mean they. they it's well, it happens the same also when actors start like touching their faces and like yeah. in, like they lose a little bit of the personality. Oh, oh a million wait, percent. did you guys see the new um um uh, what's her name? The new AMC uh, ad. No, Not I yet. didn't. I didn't. Not see yet. It, so I wasn't at names. But she's one of those. Uh, oh, it, she says she says something else. Like everyone's like, oh, it's different. Yeah, I know. I heard there's a new they, one. They're releasing two new ones or three new ones. So That's they, crazy. It, it's been I, so successful. Why am I forgetting her name? Uh, Nicole, uh, Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. It, yeah, she delivered a new line. The theater went nuts. Yeah, I yeah, bet. Yeah, yeah, they, clapped, that, they clapped for her in the theater. Good. So I'm so sick of they that other one. They clapped for her. They, they, she showed up and everyone started clapping. Yeah. Every, every time there's a, they, oh. they clap and I think like, I don't think they expected that. There's no. A I, pandemic ad, you know? That's I know. Like, I want it like burnt and really in like it, <laughs> taken away from history. I want it reminds more. me of the pandemic. Yeah, no, I yeah. want more. I want I, more. No, I'll okay. take more, but I want the oh, the first one to go away. <laughs> it remi- here. They yeah. are. Yeah, it's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> But I, I is yeah. she wrong? I mean, he, she is kind of a magical <laughs> character. I think like she's such a good actress. And Nicole so, Kidman, yeah, beautiful. The Scientology. Like, I, yeah. I want yeah. the movie version of this uh, AMC. AMC. <laughs> God, the AMC ad. <laughs> but uh, also in other countries, like for example, in Spain, AMC owns the bigger chain there. I see, and it's a different name. 
So they changed the logo from AMC. Oh, to that's that funny. Day, and she still does the whole. Oh thing. wow, that's funny. They just cut the lines, and they, she doesn't say AMC. I see. That's crazy. So like, ah, oh, we made movie be- movies better. I crazy. Yeah, but um, well, I think what is your your favorite Daniel uh, Villeneuve movie? Uh, uh, what other movies? Oh, I can I can I go because I got yeah, one. You go. Prisoners. Oh, love wow. Prisoners. I love oh, well, Prisoners. Not my favorite, but I love it. What are some other movies made? S- Sicario from our uh, mystery. Uh, um, I love Sicario. Sicario. That would be here. my favorite. I watch that movie once, like every six months. Sicario, and and again, like such a beautiful. Uh, yeah, I'm obsessed movie. with that movie, and I'm obsessed with Arrival. It's oh fun. yeah, it's three different movies for three. Different it kind of has that gothic blobbiness it, to it. it. But I thought I don't know when I saw Arrival, I was like to me that's what science fiction. It's good. Could it's be. So, but all of these movies, I love Sicario, love Prisoners. Sicario blew me away. I think from his first movie, he's one of those directors that okay, the new generation of like. Incendies was was Incendies his first? was his first movie, and then he has them. Um, yeah, Blade Runner and 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 now and the Dunes. Hell yeah. But like you know, I think he and Christopher Nolan probably dominate that big blockbuster thing. Do you think they've ever gone out to drinks? Oh yeah, yeah. I th- I think they 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 ha- yes definitely they have to share they share cinematographers. Oh yeah, of course composers. They they Nolan's kind of he's a he's very fancy. Oh yeah, yeah he's yeah, yeah. Mister Fancy. Doesn't he wear suits on set? Oh, he does wear a suit on set. And, I don't know tie. It's also you know like like every time I imagine like an actor asking for note and he'll say oh yeah. You know, yeah, man, these so European funny. directors, huh? I know that's so funny. The British, the British accent. If I could do it, I would. Oh yeah, if I were made Interstellar, I'd have like a Lakers shirt on, <laughs> you <laughs> know, <laughs> like a baseball hat backwards. Yeah, bad friends hat, something like that. Yeah, and Bobby goes, would have been a robot. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes on set with this, like you know. Hey, I, I want to ask you guys this glass. this question: How does this compare to um, the sci-fi movies that have been made in this century? Um, in in total, is it in your top three? Is it is it the best? Yes, top three. Dune two. Yes, yeah, top century, three. Meaning like this top- century, yeah. In the last twenty four years, for me, yeah, it ranks two behind Mad Max Fury Road. I have to, I have to, even though it's different, and this is more of a space sci fi. I wouldn't call Mad Max no, sci fi. Li- a little bit. It's it's dystopian it's, sci fi. It is a dystopian movie. It, but yeah, it's fi. It's fi. It's and it's sci, <laughs> but if okay, if we're discounting okay. that, it's my favorite um, of this. So, century. so uh, yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. I think I mean I love Arrival. I think Arrival has something less of a spectacle like the, yeah, like of this course. Movie, but but definitely there. Yeah, yeah. The, I think Dune like links to you know Star Wars and links to two thousand and one. Yeah, it's like kind of like the the, the movie of of the century about like answers in space and things yeah like blows that. me away like when i saw the first one so i never i never saw the lynch one i was like i'm obsessed with this this is awesome yeah and mad max i think mad max is one of those things that we can definitely talk another day about it because it, it shares things with this do movie, furiosa but it, because it's beautiful and it's like colors stream like so much so much action and such a world building experience it's like fisting <laughs> god <laughs> so gross mm-hmm Wow, you do that pretty so easily. Gross. Huh? So gross, huh? And I keep doing it. <laughs> I've only yeah, f- but what an uncomfortable way of eating popcorn, by the way. Oh yeah, they knew what they were doing. They yeah. knew what they were doing. Every here. time you pull the the thin, like it, you get one. Also, also, I if you try to get the bottom popcorn, it pulls your arm hairs out. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's annoying. So it's uh, it's not really pragmatic. So guys, you say by, by experience, made uh, in China. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wash by. only. <laughs> to oh. uh. But to yeah, wrap it up, definitely why top, should top. someone? Why should people watch not only the first Dune because you need, kind of need that 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 setting, but why should they watch Dune too and and um, go to the theater to watch it? I think it's one of those movies that has it all. Is is what mm. I think Hollywood should be. What the best Hollywood is? I agree like, with it's you. Big, ambitious, beautiful, breathtaking, amazing actors, great storyline. Like you know, you have action and and and, mm-hmm. and and fights and romance and <laughs> really deep characters yeah um yeah and, and and it's made for a big screen i don't think yeah there's this is the best of the best in, in that world of like big movies and i think 
Uh, yeah, nobody will regret seeing this movie. I think it's beautiful. I also think, I like what we're talking about, uh, how this director says less is more with talking and stuff. I really, I think watching this is watching something fresh. I think uh, watching someone do their own thing and not relying on um, script rewrites, things like that, punch-ups, I think that's really cool. And I think you're watching an artist at work at his peak of his powers when things could go bad, when you get more money, bigger budgets, and he's still killing it. Yeah, because so. see, see that. He he made the ball move of doing movie one without knowing if he could do movie two. His yeah. pitch was like, I'm not going to make one Dune. I'm going to make each book. I mean, it's one book, but it's divided into yeah. two books. I want to make book one and book two. And I told him, okay, but it will depend on how the first one. Of course. Goes. And yeah. then he got $190 million to make Dune 2. And then, right. And then, the, because the first one, it started performing. I mean, at the end, it performed okay, but it yeah. didn't. It was like the day and day, meaning it released at the same time on HBO Max. It, it was, was in weird. the middle of the pandemic. They kind of killed his big vision. Yeah. But he was nominated for all the Oscars mm -hmm. and all of that. So, wait, and they, didn't he get two hundred sixty million or so for uh, Blade Runner? Wasn't it uh, something crazy outrageous? Yeah, that also, was pre-pandemic, and, and that was also one of those movies that isn't you know because it's amazingly beautiful, mm -hmm. incredible, but it's not a movie. It's not a blockbuster. Yeah, the story isn't that great. It is a little confusing, you know. Yeah, like people don't love that sort of like super high intellectual thing. And, yeah. And Blade Runner, even the first one, the pacing slower, and I don't. I think that doesn't really resonate with these audiences the, uh, these days. Yeah. I mean, that's it's, more of an old school style of pacing. But like this movie, Dune Two, wow. Yeah. yeah the yeah. pacing, you're not. You will not be bored. Like you will no, be not a second energy no. and with the, the whole this, time. Yeah. yeah. That's why you should go. That's where you go see it, and go see it for Hans Zimmer's score too. How it rumbles in the theater, <laughs> that, how it hits you in the theater is <laughs> too much sand. So <laughs> the spice, yeah, he's sensitive. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I, I it. think it's it's one of the movies of the of the year for sure. Yes. You know, we're early early in the year, but I know already this is gonna be. You know, probably we're not gonna have find something like this for a few more months. I think Furiosa's coming and then- They'll re-release it in a year before the Academy Awards. Yeah, and I think like they, they now that you can watch those 70 millimeter movies in the theater, go out to the theater. This is worth watching on the big screen. Yeah. Everything lands. It's, yeah. a, it's a great day night or a great go with your family night or friends. And if you don't day. have a date, they give you one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, Bye, see guys. you guys next week. <laughs>